Tonight on Inside Louisiana Athletics, it was a very emotional weekend for the Raging Cajuns, with plenty of action on the court and the diamond. Darren Walker is joined by men's basketball head coach Bob Marlin after an Alabama road trip and women's assistant coach Deacon Jones after matchups with Sunbelt foes from Georgia. We'll also revisit the Andrea Broadhead cancel walk and hear favorite memories of the late, great Tony Robichaux from Raging Cajuns Baseball. But first, Dan McDonald and Eric Mouton recap baseball's opening night that all started with a powerful tribute. You're watching Inside Louisiana Athletics. Thanks, Marcel. Opening night for Raging Cajun Baseball is always big at ML Tigmore Field at Russo Park, but it was especially big opening night this time as the Cajuns honored longtime coach Tony Robichaux with a series of memorials prior to and during the game. I'm Dan McDonald along with Eric Mouton and Eric. It was a night very emotional at the start of the ball game. So many things going on with Coach Robichaud's number being retired, the number 36 that will never be worn by another Cajun, his number being on the wall here at the Teague, the flag going up, all the fans holding up the 36. It was just a very special moment. It really was, and hats off to everybody here at Teague that came out to, to do that for Coach Robe, as you see. Uh, his wife and Coach Anthony Babineau, just a great night. And then both teams got down to business and had to play uh, a Division I baseball game after all of that. We lost Coach Robichaux last July 3rd after a battle with heart problems. Unexpected at age 57 and a loss that touched not just the Cajun program, but touched the entire college baseball community as well as the full community here in Acadiana. And his wife Colleen and the entire family Behind them, more than 100 former players, it turned out, to come and honor the man that coached them all during their careers. And not just because of his coaching, because of the man he was. He, he often said that he didn't want to be remembered as a baseball coach. Coaching was just what he did and not who he was. And his sons, Austin and Justin, fittingly throwing out the first pitches, the ceremonial first pitches in tonight's game. And... Uh, and game? Oh, yeah, there was a game. And uh, it almost got lost in all the activities going on around it, but a very good game with Southeastern Louisiana's Lions as the Lions are able to put some runs on the board in the sixth inning. Cajuns were able to hold the Lions scoreless, even though this uh, double early in the ball game put runners at second and third, but a couple of strikeouts by Cajun starter Connor Angel, who had a great performance after he you know, got settled down, but a big three-run homer by Brandon Hale for the Lions off Cajun reliever Jeff Wilson. That made it three to nothing. That turned out to be the difference in the ball game. Cajuns did score some runs in the sixth and the seventh. Connor Kippel with a leadoff hit in the sixth, and then Nate Hagedorn with a ground rule double that bounced just inside fair ground. It bounced into the box seats. That scored Kemple from second base. Hayden Cantrell had to go back to third on the ground rule, and that might have cost the Cajuns a run. But Louisiana is also able to get a run in the seventh inning on a ground ball by Justin Green that scored Brennan Bro, And that brought the Cajuns back within three to two. The Lions threatened again late. They're able to keep it at 3-2, but Louisiana unable to get the run in the bottom of the ninth. And the Lions hold on to win 3-2. Next on Inside Louisiana Athletics, our Darren Walker is joined by men's basketball head coach, Bob Marlin.
If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Coming off a historic 11-win season, Billy Napier and his team want you to commit to the culture. Get your football general admission season tickets for only $60 today. Louisiana Athletics is offering a $5 per month payment plan, but watch out because prices increase to $110 after March 1st. In 2020, you can expect big games like McNeese, Wyoming, South Alabama, and much more. Louisiana Athletics is offering a $5 per month payment plan. Call the ticket office at 337-265 2170 or visit the ticket office at the Cajun Dome. Go Cajuns! Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Athletics with only four regular season games left on the schedule. The games for the men's basketball teams get bigger and bigger down the stretch here now to talk about that and a bunch more is the head coach Bob Marlin. Um, you go to South Alabama on Thursday, a team that you lost to by three earlier in the year and you fall to them by three once again and just seemed like it was an opportunity that just kind of slipped away. It was. It was a crazy game, uh, Darren. And in the second half, we got the lead early and in the second half, middle of the second half and controlled the game the last seven minutes of the game with the lead and they, they got the lead back at one with a minute to go uh, and then P.J. Hardy it's a big three-point shot for us to give us the lead back and then we give up a four-point play mm -hmm. on the other end. Uh, you didn't shoot the ball particularly well from the three-point line in the first half, but in the second half, completely different story, 47%. And, of course, Cedric Russell had a huge night on this night, 29 points, 7 for 13 from three-point range. He really got it going. We were actually down eight, and he made three consecutive three-pointers to put us up one. And, again, I believe it was like seven minutes to go, and we led the rest of the game till, till 25 seconds. Yeah, in the second half, things kind of opened up on the middle because him making those outside shots the defense was kind of having to come out past the three-point line and you were kind of able to dump that over to Jalen and he was making some nice turnaround jumpers he had 19 on the night they play a tough zone and Jalen's really good in the middle of the zone uh, catching the ball and making a soft jump shot Tyre Smith did some good work for us too early in the game so our focus was to get inside not settle for three-point shots we shot 41 here at, at the Cajun Dome in South Alabama so we wanted to have an inside out attack it was a pretty evenly played game statistically but when you looked a little bit deeper, uh, South Al had the edge in uh, points in the paint, fast break points, bench points, and second chance points. Is, do you think that's kind of where the game was won maybe? Well, it, fast break points are a problem. We turned a couple of balls over like we've been known to do this year and resulted in points. But the bench scoring is, is irrelevant because we, we dressed nine guys mm -hmm. and we right. played seven. And Trajan Wesley was one of those guys who doesn't score. So we're, we're typically not going to score a lot off our bench with the personnel that we have right now. On to Troy Saturday night, uh, a pretty good shooting first half. Jalen Johnson, Tyra Smith kind of leading the way to a nine-point halftime lead. Yeah, did a good job early. Uh, Troy hit the first couple of buckets of the game. We got the lead back and we led the last 34 minutes of the basketball game and played really well for 16 minutes. Uh, Darren and had, had a chance to have a 20-point lead at the half. We let them go on a little run to finish mm -hmm. the, the half and, and it was only nine points. Yeah, cut, they cut the lead to uh, five midway through the second half. Half, but you guys answered with an 11 and 2 run uh, and that was really an important stretch of the game. Yeah, it was. We never gave up the lead. Uh, they, they got it to three a couple times in the last minute uh, and we were able to withhold Gordon getting to the basket. He had a big second half for them and Gord had, had 28 points in the ball game. Talk about uh, what it says about your team to, you know, Troy kept punching, but then you would counter punch, uh, just showing that fight. Well, this team's done a good job of that recently. I, I mean, from the last few weeks, we've been resilient, and they've played for each other. They're, they're continuing to share the ball. We're playing a little bit better defense than we played and, and certainly executing better than we played. And if we can control turnovers and continue to play good defense, we're going to make some shots and, and continue to – to have that fight. You have four regular season games left. Uh, the, there's only one on the schedule for this week, and that is at Monroe. You beat, beat this team by 21 earlier this year, but um, you got to start looking at the big picture and the standings, and this 
this is a must win. Well, it's an important win for us, uh, for sure, because we're trying to move up in the seating right. and get, get a home game. And uh, Monroe's got their backs against the wall. Uh, they're still in it mathematically. Uh, but uh, playing a rival game is always tough, and w we seem to get Monroe's toughest shot every year right. when we go up there, so different than any other team in the Sun Belt. But we'll be prepared and be ready. So it, it may be a little bit premature to talk about the Sun Belt Conference Tournament, but uh, all three opponents after Monroe are in front of you. It's a great opportunity for you to, like you said, start you know climbing that ladder. Well, you look at who we play, and it's mm -hmm. certainly fine to do that. We've got uh, Monroe, then we have Arkansas State at home, who we have a chance to catch possibly and then uh, go to Little Rock in a game they're fighting for the championship trying to win we lost a close game here we had the lead the first home game back in December and then we finished up with Coastal Carolina who we're currently tied with so that game will be huge too it'll be a swing game kind of like Troy possibly all right coach thanks a lot for the time as always we'll see you next week coming up next on Inside Louisiana Athletics Women's basketball assistant coach Deacon Jones breaks down last week for the Raging Cajuns. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. Hey y'all, get your softball season tickets today. Head coach Jerry Glasgow and his crew are back after a 52 and six season last year. We have our season opener February 7th versus Ball State and exciting games all year round, including the one versus LSU right here in Lamson Park on February 15th. You don't wanna miss this, so get your season tickets today at RagingCajuns.com slash SBTix. We can't wait to see you there. Go Cajuns. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Athletics. Women's basketball looking to put an end to a three-game losing streak with two home games this past week with Georgia State and Georgia Southern. Filling in for head coach Gary Broadhead is the associate head coach, Deacon Jones. Welcome to the show. Uh, let's talk about your game on Thursday night. Now, you guys have had some slow starts in recent past, but that was not the case the other night. 57% from the field in the first half. Well, the Panthers had a decent first half, too, and you wind up having a two-point lead at, at the break. Yes. Well, going into that game, we knew we could play well with Georgia State because we played them the first time without Ty Doucette mm -hmm. and Brandon Williams, two of our leading scorers and starters. So we kind of knew we had the edge on playing with them. However, our defense wasn't up to par that game, so we kind of fell short on that end. Um, unfortunately, though, the second half uh, was nothing like the first half when it comes to shooting. You only shot 21% from the field for 19 points, and it really, the, the game, the entire game boiled down to a seven and a half minute stretch where you guys went scoreless, and then late in the game, a seven to two run in the final uh, five minutes of the contest. Yeah, I think we're getting in our own way. We talked to our players at the end of that game and said, listen, stop being afraid, stop thinking, stop being afraid of shooting. Just let it go. Y'all are capable of shooting. Y'all more than willing. Y'all have the green light. Let it go. Let it fly. We always say that, let it fly, because our girls really can shoot. 
Uh, pink game on Saturday. You're hosting Georgia Southern. Another great start in this one. 27 first quarter points. You're shooting 73% from the field and 83% from three-point range. I mean, what are you thinking watching that happen? So I just told you we could shoot, right? Yeah. So that, that's a great testament of why we say let it fly. Our girls really can't shoot the ball. And when they're in the mindset of scoring, mm -hmm. that 27 points in one quarter shows that. Um, now, obviously, you can't expect that to continue for the whole course of the game. Uh, unfortunately, the team really kind of went cold in the second quarter, only nine points. But the first quarter enabled you to hold a 36-28 lead at the break. And again, I think because AC was out that game, mm -hmm. our rotation was off a little mm -hmm. bit and fatigue set in. So nine points wouldn't do to lack of their skill set. Right. It was more fatigue in our rotation. But as you can see, we picked up momentum in the third and fourth quarter. Right, very evenly played second half. You shot the ball much better. Uh, pushed the lead to 15 at one point and you wind up winning the game by 12. We, we, we knew we owed them because of what they did to us in Statesboro. Right. They really shot the ball very well, and I think they had the confidence that it was going to come in and steal a victory on the road. Mm -hmm. However, we had something for them. Right. Uh, five players in double figures in this game. Jamira Mathis led the way with 18 points. Uh, she was obviously the leading scorer. Um, and what I guess what I'm getting at is, you know, this team can have any one of four or five people leading the way in scoring, and that's got to be a, a tremendous advantage to you guys that you're not just leaning on one or two people. And our mojo is strength in numbers. We tell our girls we have a bench. We have people that can play this game. Kim Burton was lost for these three or four games. Now she was five for 10. Mm -hmm. Kendall Best came off the bench to do two for three. Jamar, who normally comes off the bench, started and I, she was hot. She mm -hmm. was like three for three from the three point line, four for four from the field. So we have girls that are capable of stepping in and filling in those roles. Now I think it's all about their mindset and just like I said, play stress-free ball. A great day all around for the women's basketball program. It started the day with the Andrew Broadhead Foundation Cancer Walk. And then obviously during the game, you had cancer survivors who were being recognized. I mean, just talk about the, the day off the court. Yeah, it was a very emotional day off the court because we have so many family men members and relatives and loved ones that are so close to the team and the coaching staff that are, has been affected by breast cancer. And and I think right before the game, when, the, when they came into our locker room, mm -hmm. our girls just felt it. They felt it. So we knew it was going to be a beautiful game just off of the energy and the effort that these survivors had in the locker room. So. Uh, currently, you're fifth in the conference standings with five games to go. ULM is the only game on the schedule for this week. Uh, the Warhawks are 3-21 and on the season, but uh, you just played these th this team uh, not just a month ago, I think it yes. was, and, and there's some uh, familiarity between the coaching staff, so you got to bring your A game this time. Well, you, like UN, ULM is not out of it. They still can have something to play for. Mm -hmm. and even though they record in the case that they're probably the bottom of the league, they still have something to play for. And as an in-state rival, the coaches grew up together, and Coach Broadhead grew up coaching Coach Donald Williams. So, again, it's going to be a very intense game. Some of these girls on our team played with mm -hmm. girls from their team on the AAU or in high school. So it's going to be an intense game. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Best of luck this weekend. Appreciate you filling in. Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Athletics, we revisit the Andrea Broadhead Cancer Walk and hear favorite memories of the late Tony Roper Show from Raging Cajuns Baseball. Raging Cajun fans, the fan favorite concessions that you know and love are returning for this spring. Fan favorites such as a $1 hot dog, popcorn, and potato chips, $2 cheese quesadilla, and $2 domestic beer. And new for Diamond Sports, $3 domestic cans and drafts, a $4 draft craft, and $4 banana links. 
Once again, your fan-friendly pricing is back, including your favorite Raging Kids boxes, like the $7 burger, fry, fruit snack, and drink box, and the $5 popcorn, fruit snack, and drink box. Fan-friendly concession prices are back for the spring. Go Cajuns! Welcome back. Time to rewind and revisit the Andrew Broadhead Cancer Walk from Saturday and hear some of the favorite moments and robisms of the late great Tony Robichaux from the Raging Cajuns baseball players. We're doing our uh, Andrew Broadhead uh, Cancer Walk and we're really excited. Uh, with in, we're combining our pink game with that. So, uh, you know, our girls are really excited about the opportunity of cancer awareness and, you know, the scholarship foundation that we have for her. So it's excited. We also act, uh, added a girl daddy day where we're invited, uh, you know, dads with their daughters today uh, in honor of Kobe Bryant and his daughter. You know, I come from that kind of kind of a uh, sports world where I coached my daughters and they really got me involved in the women's basketball. So I just pay tribute to that because I think it's important for us to grow the sport is our dads and, and moms got to get involved. But this is a great day uh, to celebrate. You know, my wife was uh, started the Biddy program years ago uh, in Lafayette and it grew from 24 to now that's 1,500 kids in the program. So she's done, she's done a lot to uh, to spur on basketball, especially girls basketball in our area, but also just giving back to the community. And so this is a way of honoring her and carrying on her legacy with a combination of, you know, having cancer awareness. You know, the walk is just a, it's more of a fun walk, but it's a, it's a social event for me because I get to see a lot of people that have supported not only our program here, but our family and our community. So it's awesome time. My, my daughters run the, the Biddy program and because my wife started it and you know they did about 1500 kids so I thought it would be a great time to try to invite them on a day that my wife started that program and now the dad and the daughters that are really enjoying the game the, the, the time together is probably the most important thing to end the game and I you know I just thought it was a great combination today to try to go you know one day I mean my goal is to try to cure cancer I know I can't but I can be a small factor and one day I would love to have a cancer game with 10,000 people here and say man cancer is cured you know and I know with the technology and me and my wife being involved in my family and and learning about the breast cancer it's, it's coming you know it's coming it's a, it's a situation it's just time and it just but I just feel real comfortable that one day we're gonna be able to say that in, in my lifetime I think my favorite memory uh, with Coach Robe actually happened before I ever even got on campus. Uh, so that same day that we sat in his office on my recruiting trip, uh, my mom was talking to, to him about coaching. She was a dance coach at ULM and just to hear them talk was pretty awesome. And uh, then right after, uh, she asked him what the best place to go get some Raging Cajun gear was. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, come on and I'll show you. And he just hopped in the car with us. First weekend at Texas, my, my first start or whatever, 
Um, I struck out my first career at bat, and uh, I came down the steps, and I was so frustrated. Uh, I was kind of sped up too. I was a freshman. I was kind of sped up, um, and he just looked at me, and he like he he like put his hands on both my shoulders and goes, "Okay, you got that out the way now. Like it's all good." <laughs> Some of the talks that he would just it'd be one on one conversations that I've had with him, just him. I'll say uh, educate me about things and give me advice about certain things on what to do. There's, I've said this before in uh, other interviews that I can call him at any time at night and he'd answer just to talk and help me get through something. I don't know if I could chalk it down to a moment. It was more of just his presence every day. Yeah. So going to the field, seeing him, knowing the support and love that he would give to us as mm -hmm. players and as individuals. So he wasn't just a baseball coach. He was here for us every day, um, right. and that meant more to us than we can even explain. Favorite role is Don't let other people's perception of you become your reality. Why does that stick out to you? I think it always stuck out to me because there's always going to be people talking one way or another about you, and it all depends on what you believe. And at the end of the day, in your heart of hearts, you know what you're capable of. I think you can't take, I mean, wait, what, what, how's it go? You can't teach a loaf of bread how to be a thoroughbred. Yeah, you know, don't let the monkey on your back become King Kong. Um, you know, he told me that a few times. Um, he said, you know, you, you have opportunities to do a lot of great things, um, but you can't let, you know, small things, you know, just own you. I think my favorite one is you buck, or you hang a curveball in high school, mm -hmm. buckle the kid's knees. You hang a curveball in college, you buckle the squirrels in the trees. Favorite world business? Uh, I got two. Uh, first one, uh, you can either be a thoroughbred or a loaf of bread. And then the uh, second one is uh, the Bible doesn't tell you how to be a baseball player, but it's pretty clear how to become a man. Thank you all for being here today on this, this beautiful day, the most special day, a day to honor. Someone that we all love, continue to love, someone that has meant so many things, so many different things to each and every one of us. His purpose was never baseball. It was about building men, and Coach Rowe was the absolute best at that. Colleen, we love you guys with all of our heart. You know, this date has been on a calendar for, for a long time. And it's something uh, us as a family has been looking forward to for a long time. To the former players that had a hand in this, thank you. To our masterful sculptor, Brian Hanlon, thank you for pouring your heart and soul into this in managing to defy all odds and producing this masterpiece in only seven months. And I'd like to honor you with this jersey so you can become an official member and part of our Raging Cajun family.